Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, uh, webinar on uh, using solar generators for emergency management. Uh, my name is Lee Feliciano I'm with New Use Energy. And uh, our guest today is uh, Craig Moreau, uh, who's an emergency manager um, with uh, Fayette County, Texas. So uh, let me just take you through, oops. <clears throat> so this is just a, a quick overview of the presentation today. Um, we'll do a quick introduction uh, to New Use Energy, talk a little bit about uh, what we do and why you know, why we're hosting this webinar. I think it'll be pretty self-evident once we present the information. And then uh, we'll have our guest, Craig, uh, talk about his kind of real world experience uh, using solar generators uh, in his job, uh, which I know a lot of you uh, can, will be able to relate to. Um, and then we'll wrap up with a Q and A. And just so you guys know, we're, we're trying to keep this whole event uh, to about 30 minutes max, so you can get on with the rest of your day. So just a real quick sort of background as to why we're doing this. Um, and most of you, again, you're, you're kind of in the field. Uh, so you, you most likely realize this, that, um, you know, we're uh, in the United States and the rest of the world, we're seeing an increase in the number of disasters. Uh, and, you know, Partly related to that, but also due to other issues, you know, grid reliability is becoming uh, a challenge in a number of areas. And I know those of you in Texas uh, have experienced that firsthand. So I'm not gonna dwell on this. This is just a little reminder uh, of what's going on. And so I wanna talk a little bit, uh, just real quick about uh, uh, us over here at New Use Energy. Uh, we are a mobile solar company. So everything we do, uh, all our products can either be picked up you know, by one or two individuals uh, and transported, or they are on wheels. So we don't do rooftops. Uh, we don't do people's you know, houses or offices. We just do mobile stuff. And uh, so you know, one of the things that, uh, one of the ways we describe ourselves, uh, which I think uh, is, you know, makes, connects to a lot of people, especially in the emergency management space, is what we try to do is we try to displace portable generators, which we know are pretty ubiquitous uh, when it comes to emergency management you know, and other applications like job sites. But really, we're talking here, we're focused on emergency management. And so uh, we just really want people to be aware that uh, this type of equipment is out there and is actually an alternative, a viable alternative to a regular portable generator. So uh, new has three lines uh, of equipment or solar generators. Uh, the first one is what we call our ultra portable power packs. So these are, as you can see in the pictures here, uh, they look like small suitcases. The medium one is about the size of a carry on suitcase. Uh, the small one here you see is about the size of a lunchbox. And uh, yeah, they can power everything from radios to satellite dishes. Um, we've actually had one of our, uh, our distributors uh, charge up uh, their small electric vehicle. Uh, electric bikes, no problem. Cars, yeah, you know, you can get, you can get a few extra miles uh, out of an electric vehicle in an emergency, but really, uh, we understand that in the case of emergencies, you know, your big users are uh, communications like cell phone charging, satellite dishes, lighting, possibly refrigeration. So the next step up is our SunKit uh, product line. And this was specifically designed as a result of our feedback uh, from the emergency management disaster relief community. So this is a product that is mobile, not quite as mobile as the power packs, but the sun kit is something that can actually convert into a permanent solar system. So the power packs are, are really intended for temporary use. You can use them for a day, a weekend, maybe even a week or two. Uh, but ultimately, if you want something that will operate long term for months or years, uh, then that's the sun kit. And we've also designed the sun kit to be modular and field serviceable precisely for that reason. 
And then the third uh, line of products is our uh, Sunwing solar trailers. So uh, just FYI, we are actually going to be traveling through Texas in August and visiting with Craig uh, in the middle of August. I believe it's the 16th or the 17th. Um, and then uh, on either side of our visit with Craig, we are going to be uh, doing a show and tell in the Austin area, as well as the Houston area, prior to us attending the National CERT Conference. And then finally, I just want to wrap up uh, with, uh, you know, some pictures of our sun canopy. So what you saw is basically the solar generator that has the batteries and the inverter. Um, and of course, you know, your, your, your gas pump is, is the solar panel, right? That's where you generate the energy to charge up your batteries. And so um, while our products allow you to use pretty much any solar panel out there, including ones that you can pull off people's roof or find lying in the field, you know, after a disaster, a system has been damaged. Um, we also offer a line of folding, uh, no glass, no frame, highly portable solar panels to complement uh, the portable solar generator. So we just shipped about 20 systems to Ukraine a couple of weeks ago. Um, and all of them use these types of solar panels just because they're much more mobile and, and robust and easy to transport. So with that, I am gonna hand it over to our guest, uh, Craig Moreau. So um, as you can see here, I'm not gonna read uh, uh, Craig's background per se, but um, he wears many hats, um, including the one he's got in the picture there, but uh, he's also uh, you know, paramedic, firefighter, emergency manager, um, and, uh, you know, has worked uh, all over the world uh, doing what he does, uh, but is based in Texas. And a couple of years back, um, Craig was the recipient of one of our early prototype systems, which was donated to him uh, by our, our, our close friends and colleagues at the Footprint Project, which is a, uh, a nonprofit NGO that works uh, in disaster relief and whose mission is to displace uh, fossil fuel generators with solar systems. So um, yeah, the, the guys over at Footprint, uh, Will Hegard uh, uh, donated one of the early systems that we were kind of messing around with the Craig. And as you're about to see, he has put it to really good use. So Craig, I'm just gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Lee, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, I, I do appreciate the, the nice intro and I would like to talk just a little bit about uh, my experience uh, in different places. Uh, I'm a senior captain with the third largest fire department uh, in the country, uh, the Houston Fire Department. Uh, obviously, lots of resources, lots of people. We have a uh, 100 fire stations and uh, over 4,000 uh, employees. I'm also the emergency manager of a tiny little uh, county in rural Texas. So kind of see both sides of the American uh, response to things. And then through uh, church activities, I've, I've really gone all over the world and seen, um, you know, the, the problems that, that come with not having reliable electricity in remote places when you're trying to work and trying uh, to get things done. And uh, it's given me a, a unique perspective, I think. Uh, and one of those is something that we do every day, which is ask, what if? Uh, and that's kind of what led me to looking for some of these solar powered options, because my thought pattern at the time was, well, what if we can't get diesel, if we can't get gasoline uh, in an emergency, what are we gonna do next? What are some of the other options? Uh, that led me to a correspondence with a footprint project. And then once we did have uh, one of those what if scenarios come true where we had difficulty getting the things we needed, footprint came out and uh, was able to give me a, a solar power generator that we've used uh, extensively. Uh, the next slide you're gonna look at is gonna show you where we're located. Uh, Fayette County sits almost equidistant between uh, three major uh, places in Texas, uh, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. Uh, it's about an hour, hour and a half drive to the downtown of either of those uh, uh, cities. So we're talking, you know, several million people in Houston, uh, and San Antonio, and Austin are right about a million folks. Uh, our population in, in Fayette County is fairly small. We only have about 27,000 people. Uh, but on a, any given time, we'll have 40,000 more on the road uh, driving through our county. Uh, we have a lot of festivals, a lot of fairs, a lot of things that get 
uh, huge attention, a lot, a lot of people coming in. Uh, our biggest festival happens twice a year, and on a busy day, we'll have 100,000 people at the fair, uh, which is four times the population of our, our county. So it presents some unique challenges in getting um, power to, to different places. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the problems that I've uh, seen personally with uh, gas powered generators. Uh, gas powered generators and diesel powered generators have a niche. There's a, there's a place and a time for them, um, but they tend to be the first thing everybody goes to, and we see problems with it fairly often. Uh, I've seen several deaths and some pretty horrific injuries in the Houston area when people are using um, gas powered generators. Uh, my fire station uh, in Houston is really close to the Houston Rodeo, the world's largest a rodeo. will have thousands and thousands of um, rodeo cowboys that, that sleep uh, and, and eat and do everything right there at the rodeo. And um, we'll have one or two performances a day at the rodeo, which can attract as many as 100,000 uh, visitors there. Almost every year, we'll have a death from carbon monoxide at the rodeo, uh, where the, the cowboys will park their big fancy trailers, they have living uh, quarters in the front and animals in the back, and they run it off um, gas powered generators. And what happens is if the, if the wind is not enough or if it's just the wrong scenario, uh, the, the generator from one trailer will be sucked into the air conditioner inlet of another, and um, the, the cowboy won't show up to ride, they'll try to figure out what's going on, they go knock on the trailer and the family he's been dead since the night before because of something that's pretty much totally preventable and it's just, just terrible. Uh, so that's one thing we see almost every year. Also in Houston, almost every year, we'll have a major storm or a hurricane. And after the hurricanes, people who aren't familiar with using generators will sometimes be using them for the first time. Uh, you have their kids using them, different things. Uh, one of the worst uh, burns I've seen in my career was after Hurricane Ike. We had a, a family that had been without power for a couple of weeks and they were using a, um, a small underpowered uh, gas generator and kept having to fill it up and fill it up. And um, eventually it got hot enough that when they were filling up the gas generator, uh, a teenage uh, boy that was filling it up um, experienced flash burns, which took off almost all the skin in his body, dealt with horrific infection and was a really good chance that he wasn't going to make it. Uh, he did make it, but uh, he suffered horrific injuries. So this is the downside uh, you see with, with any generator that produces an exhaust. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I've seen it personally, I've, I've dealt with it and uh, it's not a good thing. Um, I'm not saying there's never a place for uh, other types of generators other than solar. I think having a variety of uh, options leads to some versatility and leads to some, some resilience. Um, but in my opinion, your first option should always be something that is not potentially going to cause uh, death as well. And so we do know that um, many, many of the deaths that occur after natural disasters occur because of carbon monoxide poisoning and fires de dealing with uh, portable generators. And that's something I would like to see in. All right. So the next slide, uh, talk about uh, one of the things we've used our portable generator for the most, and that's setting up vaccine drives. In, uh, in rural Texas. We don't always have all the resources and everything we need. Uh, so having the ability to have a, uh, a fully powered, ready to go power station is a, is a big, big benefit. Uh, if you can see in the picture, that's uh, one of our command trailers. It's got an air conditioner on top, which in uh, May in Texas is pretty darn important. Uh, we've got a stack of radios inside uh, and we've got a, um, a Quadri, a cadre of military folks uh, that's there just to the right of the trailer. Uh, so during this particular vaccine drive, we're able to set up at uh, our fairgrounds and run multiple computers, run an air conditioner, run things for all day uh, out of that one little black box you see right in the center of the screen. Uh, as Lee mentioned earlier, that's a fairly early version of uh, what they're doing now, uh, but it's robust and has worked very, very well for us. The, the bottom of it is full of batteries that uh, I think were recycled from crashed uh, electric cars. Um, and then it's got an inverter on it and a monitoring system. And then we've got four, you can only see three in the picture, but we've got four solar panels uh, we can set up. Uh, if that box is fully charged, I can run that command center for many hours in the dark uh, before I even plug in the uh, solar panels and then with solar panels plugged in in a typical Texas day it'll run pretty much uh, indefinitely and it's been it's been a, a really good thing for us we've enjoyed it uh, very much we've used it during winter storms we've used it during vaccine drives 
Uh, I've got a community emergency response team that's drilled and trained on it. Um, we uh, can't use it for a terribly long time, but I can use it for some water removal. Uh, I've got an electric pump that I can plug into it. Uh, not necessarily ideal use for uh, batteries. Electric pumps use a lot, a lot of power, uh, as do air conditioners. Uh, but the, the the versatility of it is is pretty tremendous. Uh, we also have the ability to use it for some uh, energy efficient lighting at night for emergency operations. As you know, uh, all emergency operations are difficult when you don't have the lighting and the things you need. It makes it more difficult. So having a ready to go power pack uh, has been a big boom for us and something that's uh, I, I would love to have more of. Eventually, uh, I would like to get a command trailer uh, that is solar powered that I can just pop up and go and leave it there and definitely use that for uh, command and control and, and also use it as a community center where people can come and charge their cell phones, get in contact with their neighbors uh, and do that type of thing. In uh, Fayette County, we as I mentioned before, we kind of sit between Austin and Houston. So we get the natural disasters from both places. We get the, the drought that we're experiencing right now, which leads to massive, massive wildfires. Uh, and then we also get the hurricanes and it leads Texas to be, uh, Fay County to be the second most amount of declared disasters in the whole state of Texas. And so we, we get it a lot and uh, being able to have this versatility has been a big boon for me and something that I appreciate very much. Um, that about wraps up my, my comments on it, but I am uh, willing to take any questions. If anybody has anything, feel free to jump in the chat uh, or you can call me or email me on the um, uh, information there on the screen. Uh, like I said, I do wear a few hats. Um, I'm the Chief of Emergency Management and Homeland Security for Fayette County, Texas, also a senior captain uh, with Houston Fire Department and a paramedic uh, as well. And uh, any, any questions you have, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Craig. And again, I, I just wanna repeat that uh, um, the New Use Energy uh, trailer, uh, one of our latest uh, uh, compact five by eight Sunwing trailers is gonna be going through the uh, um, Austin and Houston areas uh, the week of August uh, 15th, 16th, 17th. And then uh, we're going to be attending the National CERT Conference uh, from the 18th to the 20th. So, um, okay, I've got a question here for Craig. Um, Craig, can you talk about your resources that you use to learn about how to get started with solar generators? I think most people may be daunted by the prospect of learning how to use them. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, the, I got started learning about it like. Pretty much every one of my generation gets started by doing a Google search and just trying to get a little information, get some contacts. That's how I got started with Will. Uh, and then when they, when I took possession of the first solar generator, uh, the learning curve was pretty easy, actually. I mean, it's it really is a plug and play uh, type system, um, and 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 some of it you don't even have to plug. Uh, in fact, uh, if the unit is fully charged, uh, you can just directly plug your your stuff in. Get, get going, setting up your command trailer, setting up your computers, whatever you're going to be using the generator for, get that going. And then once that's going, then I'll start uh, plugging in uh, the solar panels. Uh, the solar panels kind of daisy chain together. Uh, the, the three you see in the song picture earlier and the fourth one, uh, you just plug um, the, the plugs to each other. And then the end of the plug uh, goes into the machine. It's a, um, it's a pretty easy system, uh, I think. I mean, I think it's easier than than running a, a portable generator. Honestly, you're you're not having to worry about, you know, is the fuel level full? Do I have the, the fuel turned on? Is it choked? Am I supposed to choke it? All these things uh, that that go along with working small engines. Unless you're working with small engines every day, they can be really fickle and finicky. Um, another big downside, in my opinion, to portable generators is unless you're using them all the time. Uh, they get gummed up and you have to worry about is the carburetor clean, different things. You don't have to worry about that near as much uh, with a solar generator. It requires some some basic checking on and making sure everything's plugged up and working. I've had a wire come loose a time or two, uh, but in general, much, much easier to initially deploy and much, much easier to maintain uh, than, than any motor power generator I've ever used. Uh, that's great. Um, another question I have is... What type of equipment can you store inside the trailers? You mentioned fridges. Um, what else? That question's for me? Yes. 
Yeah, I think you can deploy uh, however it meets your needs. Everybody's going to have different needs. Um, you know, if your if your emergency management is also coupled with an EMS, you may have the the uh, need to store refrigerated medications. That's something that's uh, perfectly reasonable, acceptable uh, for us. Uh, one of the main things we were about is what's called a rehab. So that's making sure our first responders on a long uh, term assignment have uh, water and food and the things they need to stay cool. We also have um, uh, frozen bottles of water that we used and, and we'll, we'll stick it down in their bunker gear and stick it in their um, pockets to, to cool them down because heat stroke is a, is a major killer out here. Uh, having a, a small energy efficient um, refrigerator, a small energy efficient um, freezer, a, a radio stack, you know, you, it's, it's simple math really when you look at the wattage of uh, what you're going to be using and then the wattage of your particular uh, generator, whether that's solar or a uh, gas generator, uh, you, you want to make sure you, you leave yourself some, some room. You don't want to bump right up against uh, the, the max usage, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll probably be doing uh, pretty well. Uh, predicting how much sun you're going to get is it's a little bit difficult, uh, but again, leaving yourself a little margin for error and some wiggle room is, is a big deal, and I think it's important to practice and use these things. Uh, other than you know the most important time to use them, you know, figure out a time that hey, I can set the sucker up and 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 play with it. You know, find a community group or an organization that that that's using generators on a regular basis. Says hey, can I save you some gas today? I need to I need to use mine. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be at the CERT conference. Our our CERT team, our community emergency response team, uh, is now uh, deployed almost immediately when there's these large incidents, specifically to feed and water our first responders and work with a local charity we have called Feed the Need. And uh, they got a trailer that comes out and, and in the past they have used a, um, a gas generator all the time. And it's loud and it produces smoke and all the things that go with it. Um, they're, they're glad to have a quiet source of um, electricity and also one that doesn't cost four or five or $6 a gallon to run, which you know gas prices right now are expensive. Yeah, even in Texas, huh? Yeah, even in, even in Texas, uh, not quite as high here as uh, as other places, but uh, it wasn't that long ago we were hovering around a dollar a gallon, and now we're uh, over four. So it's it's really put a pinch on a lot of people. Holy cow! Um, okay, uh, another question is: uh, What would you say are the biggest advantages of using a solar generator compared to a regular gas generator? Oh, it'd be a toss-up between safety and sound. Um, you know, the paramedic side of me says safety um, because I, I don't like seeing people die of carbon monoxide and I don't like seeing people burned by uh, flashes of gasoline. Uh, but the sound difference is dramatic, particularly if you're doing any medical operations. We use this a lot for vaccine clinics and uh, mobile testing labs and that type of thing and being able to, to talk to your patients confidentially with, without having to yell and scream, and use sign language, and all that stuff. That's a, that's a big, big, big uh, advantage. And, and just the immediate uh, plug and play and go is, is, a, is a big advantage of that as well. And of course you mentioned fuel, right? I think, uh, yes. um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, that's kind of a given <laughs> to some, some extent, but I think particularly with a, a multi-day incident, um, where, you know, your, your reserve, your fuel reserves are, are out, uh, and you're in the middle of nowhere or there's lineups at the gas station. So, well, you know, one of the biggest, uh, events we've had, uh, related to fuel, uh, was after hurricane Rita. If you remember hurricane Katrina, which flooded, uh, New Orleans, it was a big catastrophe. Uh, there was another hurricane right after that called Rita that was supposed to hit Houston, uh, and we did one of the biggest evacuations of, uh, of a major city in the history of the United States. Uh, the hurricane wound up being a dud, but the evacuation itself killed dozens and dozens of people uh, because they, they ran out of fuel, clogged up the, all the highways, and there was no fuel to get these cars going. So you have people out in the heat that were just stuck and stranded, and, uh, and there was no fuel to come. And even when we did finally get some fuel trucks, we couldn't get the fuel trucks to the drivers because the roads were so clogged up. So... Uh, I have seen that, and there there are times, even even when the supply chain's good, uh, there are times when fuel can be a problem. Uh, as supply chain uh, worries increase, cybersecurity and all those different things that that can potentially interrupt uh, the supply chain. I think having another avenue to to power 
uh, which is solar is, is a, a huge resilience builder. Even if you don't care about the safety factor, even if you don't care about the green factor, just having another option uh, builds resilience and uh, resilience builds you know, reliability. Great, and I think we've got time for one last question. Um, Craig, what, uh, can you give an example of the most common uh, types of applications or equipment that you would typically run using the solar generator? Uh, for us, it's computers and, um, and uh, that air conditioner, all important air conditioner in uh, Houston, Texas, uh, or in uh, any place in Texas. It's, it's really, really hot. Uh, in fact, our heat index today is going to be almost 110. Uh, and having the ability to, um, to have computers, radios, and an air conditioner is game changing on both a planned event or an unplanned event. So uh, having that command trailer out there and having a place that the first responders can gather and and exchange information and get a bottle of water and, and those types of things uh, are, are a big, big deal. Uh, and, and that's where that it really shines. Uh, you can also plug a, a small fan into it, move some move some air. Uh, there are things that, that don't work great with uh, with solar and um, I'll, I'll let you go into that as well. You know, there's things that have a real, real high amperage draw uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, there that's can have a downside, but for the for the vast majority of things that we're doing, um, the solar power works works very well. And as as electric motors are getting more efficient, uh, it, it may be more and more things that we're using for that. There's there's things we're using in, in emergency services now with batteries that 10 years ago would have been unthinkable. I mean, if you said I was going to use a battery powered chainsaw or or a battery powered jaws of life 10 years ago, I'd have told you you'd lost your mind. Uh, and now it's becoming standard, and uh, and it's it's more reliable in many ways, particularly the battery powered uh, jaws of life. You know, it's it's all a self contained unit. And you're not having to worry about that small engine, all the rack that comes with it, and so it 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 really has been a an accelerated uh, rate of things that that we can use without uh, gasoline and diesel these days compared to what it was even just a decade ago. Yeah, no, that's that's a great point, Craig. And I guess just before you wrap up, I just wanted to mention too that um, you know the the unit that you've been using, uh, as we mentioned, is an early prototype. It has a two thousand watt generator, uh, which is you know let's say ballpark at one hundred twenty volts AC. That's about fifteen amps. Um, so that's like the max uh, that you can power. And then it's also based on the size of your battery bank, which is essentially your fuel tank. Um, but uh, we, uh, we have trailers now that go up to about uh, eight to 10 kilowatts. So that's about four X the capacity uh, of, of the unit that you're using, Craig. And then uh, the new sun kits, uh, we have some sun kits that are currently being built in Europe uh, for Ukraine that are five kilowatts. So that's about two and a half times the generating capacity of the unit that you've got. Um, so it's really, you know, just like a generator, right? Depends on the, the specs of your equipment. Um, and hopefully for those of you that are interested in uh, taking a close-up look, uh, you'll be able to come see us uh, either in Austin or Houston or at the CERT conference. Um, but uh, anyway, we are uh, out of time, trying to keep it uh, to 30 minutes as promised. We're one minute over. Uh, so Craig, do you have any uh, any parting words before we wrap up? No, just... Continue to ask yourself that what if question would be my advice to anyone who's got operational control over anything. What if this thing that I've always done doesn't work today? What's my next option? And uh, I think if you ask yourself that on a regular basis, you will develop more resilience for your organization. That's uh, excellent advice. So uh, again, thanks uh, for making the time, Craig, and everyone who's on. Uh, appreciate your taking the time this morning and uh, hope to see you. Uh, when we're going through Texas. Have a good, have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Hey, can you email me the copy of this? Sure, I will. Thank you. Thank you.